guys, it's Jill Simmers. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have another comparison review video. Today we're going to be discussing the 50mm by Canon, the 1.8 and the 1.4. So we're going to put these two to the test and if you're a beginner photographer, I think this is going to really help you to just know which one to purchase. I think um, a lot of people just jump on the 1.8 just because of the price and I think if you're one of those people then maybe you should just stick to this video, listen to what I have to say and then make your decision because I think I... Uh, can give you a good pointers. I don't know, maybe. So um, before we get started, I do want to say that I would really appreciate it if you subscribe below and like this video and let's just go ahead and get right into it. So as I mentioned, I have the 1.4 right here and the 1.8 right here. As far as weight, obviously the 1.8 wins. Um, it's just much smaller. As far as the sign though, I think this one just feels a little bit more rugged. This one is very just plasticky overall. And the 1.4 just has a better design and build. As far as prices, the 1.8 retails for $125 new. And I'm pretty sure you can find this used for about $80. I, I purchased this on Best Buy new. So, and then I purchased the 1.4 for $400. And I'm pretty sure you can find it on eBay for $300, $350 or something of that sort. So I think as far as prices, I mean... The 1.8 definitely wins, but I think that's not what this is all about. We're trying to find like what really works for us. And I think you really have to like, you know, get into detail about this lens as one they can do to make your decision. Both of these lenses are 50 millimeter, but if you have a crop sensor camera, you would have a 1.5 crop, meaning that this 50 millimeter would be about 80 millimeters on your camera. So if you are wanting a true 50 millimeter, I would recommend going for an ASPC lens or just opting out for a full frame camera from the get-go, which is actually not a bad idea depending on what you're using it for. I purchased the 1.8 for video and I was using it for about four years on my Rebel T6i for YouTube. And now I'm using it on, in, on the ADD, which is also a crop sensor. And for me, it worked out really well because I was doing eyeshadow videos and stuff that I needed to get really up close to my eyes. And this one just was really great. It gave me that 80 millimeter, um, you know, focal length and it was just really, really nice. So it was exactly what I needed it for. However, if I needed something like this, I would have to have my camera pretty far away from me just to get this look. Right now I'm using the Sigma 18 to 35 and it's right at 35. So if you are looking for something for YouTube like this and you have a crop sensor camera, I would recommend going for a either a 28, a 24 or um, a 30 millimeter. So what really made me purchase the 1.4 after owning the 1.8, and I know you're gonna think like, why does she have two, millimeter, two 50 millimeter lenses? That makes no sense. Is because I wanted to use this um, lens for photography and I wanted to use it at 1.8 and have a sharp image. Fortunately, this lens at 1.8 is just not as sharp as this one at 1.8. I think they both struggle at their widest aperture. Like this one at 1.4 is not that great. You're gonna notice that. You're gonna be a little bit disappointed if you want to use this at 1.4. And this one at 1.8 is just not it, at least in my opinion. So um, I think to get the equal image that you get with this one at 1.8, you have to have this one at 2.2. And that's just, you know, you lose a lot of light right there. And for me, I do couples and wedding photography. So I wanted my images to be really airy, just have that much, that light coming in. And I'm usually in very dark um, rooms, dark situations. So I really need that extra stop of light, which is why I really, really like this one. Um, another thing is that the 1.4 at 1.4 has horrible chromatic aberration. And I know you're gonna think this is a really quick fix um, just in Lightroom, which it is, just one click. But after that, I've really had to go in and just fix the colors, take those purples out and the reds. And it's just been a really, you know, it's just like a lot of time that I don't have and I really wanna get those pictures out to the clients. If you are looking to shoot at 1.4, then I think you should be looking at the 1.2 which is much more expensive, it's an L glass, and it's just something that's gonna last you even longer. I don't know if that's within your budget, it's definitely not within mine still. I will get to that eventually, and I think it's really worth it if that's what you're looking for. I do wanna talk about a little bit about the 50 millimeter fo um, focal length. I think that a lot of people just think that because a lot, of, a lot of people use this lens, you need this in your kit. And this is something that I wish I had thought about early on. Um, I didn't give it much thought to know if I wanted to go for a 50 or for a 35 and I didn't realize how close focal lenses to wear. So I think it's something that you have to experiment for yourself, just taking pictures and seeing, you know, where you feel comfortable. For me, it's, um, I think the 50 millimeter is great. You can get close up pictures um, without being too close to your subject. And you can also get family portraits if you have the space to like step back and get everyone. So I feel like it's a very versatile um, 
lens and I love it for that reason. It also doesn't have much distortion when it comes to faces and you know body images and I really like it for it. I think this is a lens that I just take with me when I don't know where I'm going, when I don't know what the situation is going to be and you just have to grab a lens and put it on your camera. You can't just bring a camera bag with you and just choose. Um, I just bring this one. If I'm going to family party, I bring this one. If I'm going to um, an engagement shoot, this is the only lens that I bring. Actually, this one, not this one. Um, this is the only lens that I bring because it's just so good and I can use it for absolutely anything. There are some instances where I found myself that I really want a 35 millimeter and I'm thinking about getting the Sigma 35, but that, that would just be for family portraits and maybe for bride and groom um, portraits before the wedding as well. But honestly, with this one, I feel like you can shoot an entire wedding. Not that I'm recommending it, but I do have friends that have shot an entire wedding with the 50 millimeter 1.4 and I even have friends that have shot it with the 50 millimeter 1.8. I do think that you should have other lenses if what you're doing is wedding photography, but I'm just saying that if it comes down to it and you're in a pickle and you only can choose one lens, then go for the 50 millimeter because it's not gonna disappoint. I'm also an introverted person, so I feel like being three feet away from my subject when I'm using a 50 millimeter is just really nice. It gives me that comfort of like feeling that not, I don't have that much pressure on me. I'm not close to them. Um, I give them the space and they can actually breathe instead of me being like right up against them. And sometimes that makes people feel a little bit uncomfortable, especially if they're not, you know, used to posing um, and they're not used to, maybe they don't know you. They just met you for their first shoot before their wedding. And I just really like having this one, honestly. But if you're going to find yourself in, you know, small room situations when you know you're not going to have the space to step back and get all, like the whole shot that you need, then I would totally recommend going for a 30 or a 35 millimeter. And the Sigma ones are just honestly amazing. You don't have to purchase the Canon because I know it's so much more expensive, but the Sigma ones you can find used for $500, $450 on eBay. So I really recommend that one as well. I did forget to mention something earlier and it's that both of these lenses have vignetting, um, especially wide open. Um, the 1.4 is not as bad as the 1.8, but that vignette kind of starts to, fa to fade away when you start setting your 1.8 at 2.2. And the 1.4, I would say about f2 is where it kind of goes away. This is also a quick fix on Lightroom, so it's nothing to worry about. So now we're going to do some sample images. I'm also going to do some sample videos so you can see how fast both of these lenses focus. I'm going to try to put them both on the ADD, which is what I'm filming with, and you can see the differences and how they perform. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is a 50 millimeter 1.4 on the camera right now. I did not move the camera at all, so you can see how much it cropped, on, cropped in on me versus using the 35. So my f-stop is at 1.8 right now, and I'm gonna put this one at 2.2 just to make a fair comparison. So you can see that right now it's focused on me. It's a little bit bright in here just because I didn't change my settings um, or anything. I wanted to go back just to filming normally, but I'm gonna just put this lens in front of me. I'm kind of moving. My camera is set on autofocus, on fast autofocus right now, but you can see how it's like not really capturing. Can't, okay, that's on focus right there. So I'm gonna bring it back to me. I think it struggles a little bit with finding focus, but it definitely gets there. Okay, so there you saw, it's definitely usable. I don't think it's not, you know, it's like a horrible lens for video. It's just not where it really shines. I think it's much more better for pictures. And I think you're really gonna like it if you're using it for pictures. So let's jump into the 1.8 so you can see how it looks when you're filming video. And honestly, I really prefer this one over most of, most of my lenses um, when it comes to video. Okay, so here is the 1.8. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit darker because it is at f2.2, but notice how much, um, just how much contrasty this lens is. I told that to a lot of people and they just don't think that that is the case but to me it's just much more I don't know the blacks are so much more black you can see shadows underneath my my eyes and even at 1.8 this is still the case like the blacks are just very black and I know that you can fix all of that in post but to me it's just a very contrasty lens I don't know I don't know how to explain it but anyways um I'm just gonna try to you know focus with this one and I just feel like it's so much faster did you see how that just focused focus back to me right away. It is a little bit louder to focus. Um, I can definitely hear it focusing, but that's because of how it's made. Do you guys see like almost no struggles? 
that's why I like it so much. I feel like it doesn't really struggle to focus and it's just a great little lens if you're starting out and you want to do some video. I feel like the 50 millimeter is a great option. So yeah, there you have it. So now let's jump into the images and let's see how this baby performs. All right, you guys. So I'm going to put some sample images right here. I'm going to try to put the 1.4 images on the left and 1.8 images on your right so you can see. All these images were taken with my 5D Mark IV, but as you can see, the 1.4 just brings in much more light than the 1.8, and that's just something really important to me, given that I don't know in which scenario I'm going to be. I have to be prepared to, choose, to shoot in low light, and in most situations, I prefer not to shoot with flash, so if I don't have to, then I will push my limits with my ISO to kind of shoot natural light, just because that's where I prefer, and that's, you know, my style. But if I do need flash and I would go ahead and pop it on my camera and that's no problem. So um, I do like the 50 millimeter 1.4 much more than the 1.8 when it comes to pictures. I just feel like all the images that I get from it are just really nice and I just get blown away every time I just look at the images. I feel just much more professional and it's not because I'm using this lens. It just looks a little bit more polished in my opinion. The texture of the skins look a little bit nicer um, and that's just what I think. Um, you can have your own opinion um, when you're looking at the pictures and you can let me know below what you think. But as far as photography, I think the 1.4 is a winner for me. As far as video, I would definitely go with the 1.8. Um, but you can see, you know, the images here and let me know what you think, like I said before. But if what you're looking for is a beautiful bokeh that everyone likes, I feel like you're going to get this from either of these lenses. They're just really good and I feel like the qualities that come out of them is just really nice. It comes down to what you prefer, what you think it's good and what your style is. So I've talked a lot about photography. Now I want to talk to you about video. So obviously you have noticed that if you're purchasing this lens, for photography, I would definitely recommend going for the 1.4. It's just the better option overall, and I feel like it's just gonna last you much longer. I do, like, I do kind of regret buying this one if I didn't have used it for video. I just would not even own this at this point. I would have sold it because this one is just so much better and that shines this lens so much more. But I do want to talk about video a little bit, and I feel like that's where the 1.8 really shines because the autofocus on the 1.4 is not great. It is actually it struggles a lot so i love the 1.8 for video i think it's really nice it finds me every single time even if i'm set at 1.8 which i'm usually out when i'm filming for youtube it's just very quick very sharp and i like it um but yeah if you're using it for video i would just a no-brainer just choose this one it's very inexpensive and you're not going to need much more than this honestly when you're shooting video most of the time if you're shooting outside you don't even have the aperture set at 1.8 you mostly have it at 2.8 5.6 depending on why you're shooting but yeah for video i feel like that the aperture is not much of a worry for some people so i would definitely choose this one so anyways i just want to say that i have taken both of these lenses and multiple photo shoots and they both perform really really well i don't think if you choose one or the other you're making the right decision or the wrong decision i think you should really look at what you're doing what images you're trying to achieve and just make your decisions based on that. Don't just copy what someone else is doing. Don't just buy it because I'm saying that this one is better. Really, maybe try renting it out. There's a lot of websites online where you can do this and just, you know, get used to it, see if you like it, and then go ahead and make your decision. So these are my two cents. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This is just based on my opinion and my experiences. You may have a different opinion than I do based on what you use it for, but this is just what I use these two lenses for and how they have worked out for me and why I have both of them in my kit. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe below and like this video and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.